Gangster Granny by David Walliams. Chapter 23. Caught by the fuzz. They whirred through the town, Granny driving, Ben clinging on behind her, both in wetsuits and diving masks, with Granny's handbag wrapped in miles of cling film sitting in the basket at the front. Granny spotted Raj closing up his newsagent's shop. Hello, Raj, dear. Don't forget to save me some murry mints for Monday, she shouted. Raj looked at the two of them, open-mouthed in shock. I don't know what's got into him. He's normally so chatty. It was a long way to London, especially on a motorised scooter with a top speed of three miles per hour with two passengers. After a while, Ben noticed the roads getting wider and wider. Two lanes, then three lanes. Bums! We are on the motorway! shouted Ben from the back as ten-ton lorries whooshed past, nearly wrenching the scooter off the road with the force of their slipstream. You know, you really shouldn't swear, young man, said Granny. Now, I'm going to step on it, so hold on tight. A moment later, a particularly big petrol tanker thundered by, inches from their heads, beeping its horns. Big hairy bums, said Granny. Granny, said Ben, shocked. Whoops, that one just slipped out, said Granny. Grown-ups never lead by example. I'm sorry, Granny, but I am not sure this thing is built for the motorway, said Ben. Just then, an even bigger lorry blustered past. Ben could feel the wheels of the scooter lift off the road for a second as the slipstream dragged it in the lorry's wake. I'll take the next exit, said Granny. But before she could, flashing blue lights began to spin behind them. Oh no, it's the fuzz. Let's see if I can outrun them. She slammed her foot on the accelerator and the scooter leapt from three miles per hour to three and a half miles per hour. The police car drove alongside them and the officer inside gestured angrily for them to pull over. Granny, you'd better pull over, said Ben. We're done for. Let me handle this, my boy. Granny stopped the mobility scooter on the hard shoulder as the police car parked in front of them blocking any chance of escape. It was a big car and dwarfed the scooter like a very tall person dwarfs... well, a dwarf. Is this your vehicle, madam? said the police officer. He was fat and had a small moustache which made his fat face look even fatter. He also had a smug expression on his face that suggested telling people off was his favourite thing in the world. Or maybe second favourite, after donuts. His name tag said that he was called PC Fudge. Is there a problem, officer? said Granny innocently, her diving mask a little steamed up from all the excitement. Yes, there is a problem. The use of motorised mobility scooters on motorways is strictly prohibited, said the police officer in a patronising tone. Other modes of transport not permitted on a motorway are skateboard, canoe, roller skates, donkey, shopping trolley, unicycle, sledge, rickshaw, camel, magic carpet, comedy ostrich. Well, thank you so much for pointing that out, officer. We'll remember the next time. Now, if you'll excuse me, we are running a little late. Goodbye, said Granny cheerily as she restarted the mobility scooter. Have you been drinking, madam? I had some cabbage soup before I came out. Alcohol, I mean, he sighed. I had a brandy liqueur chocolate on Tuesday night. Does that count? Ben couldn't help but chuckle. PC Fudgy's eyes narrowed. Then would you care to explain to me why you are dressed in scuba diving gear with your handbag wrapped in cling film? This was going to take some explaining. Because, because, um... Granny was stumbling over her words. They were done for. Because we are in the cling film appreciation society, 
said Ben with authority. I've never heard of that, said PC Fudge dismissively. We are very new, said Ben. Just two members so far, added Granny, continuing the lie. And we like to keep the society low key, so we have our meetings underwater, hence the wetsuits. The policeman looked utterly baffled. Granny didn't stop talking, apparently in the hope that she might baffle him further. Now, if you'll excuse us, we are in rather a hurry. We have to get to London for an important meeting with the Bubble Wrap Appreciation Society. We are thinking of merging the two organisations. PC Fudge was all but lost for words. How many members have they got? Just one, said Granny. But if we join forces, we can save money on tea bags and photocopying and paper clips and the like. Goodbye. Granny put her foot down on the accelerator and the mobility scooter lurched off. Stop right there, said PC Fudge, holding his podgy hand out straight in front of him. Ben froze in terror. He wasn't even twelve yet and he was going to spend the rest of his life in jail. PC Fudge leaned over and put his face next to Granny's. I'll give you a lift. And tomorrow I'll read chapter 24.